those who are watching me on Spirit Realm TV, uh, God bless you. God bless you. Please, you can text, you can call me uh, on that number on the screen, 0769 2996106769299616 now you will notice something satan and please catch this this is the rem award how do you know that satan is attacking you what are the evidences of demonic attack? Chief among them is your health. Chief among them is your health. When Satan wants to disrupt demonic agenda in your life, he will attack your health. Okay? He will attack your health. See, some of you are texting me on TV. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. Good. 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 We will we, we'll pray for all these requests. Zero seven six nine two nine nine six one six. Just keep sending your texts. And those who are watching me on Facebook, God bless you. God bless you. Uh, you are welcome. You're welcome in Jesus' blessed name. Now, you know, if you want to know that Satan is not happy with your life, or, you see, Satan attacks because of different reasons. One, Satan can attack you without a cause. The Bible says the Assyrians have attacked us without a cause. So Satan can just decide to attack you without a cause. But number two, Satan attacks when he sees the blessing coming your way. You know, demons can sense. Demons can sense when God is about to bless you. Just like angels know when God is about to bless you. For instance, how do demons know that God is about to bless you? When they begin to see a lot of angelic traffic in your realm. Because angels are messengers of good. Angels are messengers of grace. So when, when, when demons begin to notice angelic traffic in your realm, they know that God is up to something. Yes. And, 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 and if they want to stop this blessing, if they cannot stop the angelic traffic from coming to your realm, then the other area they will check is your body. Because they know if they attack your body, your spirit will not be able to receive what God has released from heaven. You should know that every attack of sickness in your body is because Satan is trying to prevent a blessing that has already been released to come your way. 90% of the sicknesses in our bodies are demonically orchestrated. In Job, look at Job, please. Look at Job, Job chapter chapter 2. Let, let me read a few verses here. Job chapter 2. We're getting blessed. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, Terry. Fever, I've seen you. Look at Job chapter 2. Okay. All right. We see, we see an example, verse number 7. Job chapter 2 verse 7. Job 2 7. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord. And ay, 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 smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. He smote Job. He plagued job with boils satan attacked job's body brother sister if satan can attack the body of job he can attack any other body 90 percent of the sicknesses in our bodies are demonically orchestrated and i've told you something very powerful that when when satan sees angelic traffic in your realm when satan sees that there's a blessing that god wants to bring your way and he can't stop it from that realm then the next thing is he will attack your body because 
a broken body cannot allow the spirit to function. So he breaks your body. He attacks your body. He gives your body a fever that you don't understand where it's coming from. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me say something here. Until you become, until you approach sickness spiritually, you'll always be a victim. Until you approach the issue of your health spiritually, you'll always be a victim. Don't allow pain, infirmity, discomfort, anything that makes your body not to function the way God created your body to function should face a spiritual reaction from you. Yes. You see, sickness is one of the diversions, one of demonic diversions in your life. Think about the time you just spent trying to make your body healthy. Think about it. Think about the money involved. Our, our, somebody called me today, a bishop actually, who is getting blessed with this series. I, maybe even is online. He said, Rev, I remember there was a guy who was sick, very, very sick, and, 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 and people sold lands, people emptied their bank accounts just to make this man go through medication well and all that. And then he told me, Rev, you can't believe that after they had sold the last piece of land and they had left with nothing in their account, that is the time the person died. You know, sickness can disrupt your budget. Those of you who say that it's, I, have, I have a tight budget, I have a tight budget, I have a tight budget. Sickness can disrupt your budget. Insurances grant out. It takes time. It takes money. It drains you emotionally. It drains you physically. It drains you spiritually. And not only draining you, even those around you feel the heat. They feel the discomfort. I believe there's a reason behind John chapter 2, the guy, the four guys who carried the sick. And when they went to Jesus' house, they found that the place was full and Jesus was preaching. They said, we can't go back with this sick person. Who, uh -uh. The Bible says they tore the roof and let down the sick person. The Bible says Jesus seeing their faith, not the faith of the sick person. What am I trying to tell us? You must look at the, the issue of health as a spiritual issue, not a physical issue. Now forget that. You must approach this matter of health as a spiritual issue, not a physical issue. Come on, somebody say, I reject sickness. I reject diseases from my body in the name of Jesus. Say it again, I reject sickness. I reject diseases from my body in the name of Jesus. Say the last time, I reject sickness. I reject diseases from my body in Jesus' blessed name. Hallelujah. Type it there. Confess it wherever you are. Let this confession be in writing and also be verbal. Treat your health spiritually. There's nothing wrong with going to hospital. There's nothing wrong with taking medication. Depends in, it depends on the level of faith. But the truth is this. Nothing is, is, is truly treated until it is spiritually handled. Nothing. Nothing. I'd gone to pray for a patient today in the morning. I was, uh, I'd gone to one of these hospitals. And I entered and I found the doctor. And I said, Ask, how, how are these people? How is it? I say, I asked the doctor. Are they healed? They don't look at me and say, no, they are not healed. So I realized he didn't understand. He told me, he told me that uh, we can only treat, only God can heal. You know, the doctor was trying to say that there's nothing we can do about healing. All we can do is to treat, and that is a wrong mindset. I don't know if they was born again or not, but that is a mindset that many people have. When it comes to sickness, they, they tend to leave the responsibility to God. They tend to say that, let's just do what we can do, and let's leave the rest to God. It is God who heals. It is God. Not true. God is the one who heals. No, 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 no doubt about it. But he doesn't just heal because you're sick. 
The involvement of your faith is what determines the extent of the divine hand of God over your health. So much as you say that let's do what we can do, then we leave the rest to God. What people try to say is that when, when people say that let's do what we can do, what they mean is that go through treatment, take medicine, and then wait for God. Uh, we have left everything to God and the doctors. It's a, it's a lie from the pits of hell. If God healed that way, then the cases that require urgent attention, God will give them attention. But we have seen people pass on because of something like headache. You see, God does not get involved in human affairs until our faith is in place. So don't take the issue of sickness to be an issue by do your best, leave the rest to God. Once you go through treatment, it's only God who can heal. Remove that from your mind is an error. That is ignorance on rampage. If God healed that way, then many will not have died. God heals, okay? God saves, okay? I see quite a number of WhatsApps in our church line. How, uh, how do you do this? Maybe call them to help me. Yeah, I'll pray. I'll pray for all these people. But I want us, first of all, to listen to the teaching. Uh, I, I, are you getting it? God heals, yes. But he doesn't heal by just saying, do your best, leave the rest to God. Can I, can I look at these WhatsApps uh, from uh, Spirit Realm TV? Uh, are you getting it, children of God? There is what you and I have to do for the hand, that divine hand of healing, to be upon us. Hello? Are you catching the flow? Oh, God bless you. If you just joined us, you're welcome. Welcome. This is Spirit Realm TV. TV uh, um, we are handling our topic uh, divine health okay handling our topic divine health I'm just seeing some messages on uh, our 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 what do you call this our line uh Zero seven six nine two nine nine. Go back to the text two nine nine six one six zero seven six nine two nine nine six one six. If you're watching us, we are live on Spirit Realm TV, we are live on YouTube, we are live on Facebook. God bless you, God bless you on YouTube. I can see you're there, but please tell me who are you? Where are you watching us from? How is the message blessing you? Those who are watching us on on Facebook also, you're welcome. Please love and share. I, 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 I want you to understand that matters to do with healing is not you saying that do your best, God will do the rest. That is ignorance on rampage. Never forget that. There is what you can do to partner with God to bring about healing in your body. Yes, yes, yes. Never forget that. Otherwise, saying let's just do your best and leave the rest to God, that is trying to leave all the responsibility to God and to the doctors. And let me be honest with you, my father and the Lord made a statement which I strongly believe, and I, I, I always repeat it to myself. Any faith that makes God absolutely responsible for the results of your life is irresponsible faith. Let me repeat myself. Any faith that makes God absolutely responsible is irresponsible faith. Any faith that makes God absolutely responsible for the results is irresponsible faith. True Bible faith is a partnership between humanity and divinity. And divinity. It's a partnership. What you do first determines what God does second. So you cannot say we have done our best, let God take the rest. That's how people die before their time. And then when they die, another thing comes. God takes, God gives, God takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But when you look at divine calendar, you're not supposed to go at this time. Somebody say, I refuse to die before my time. 
Say it again. I refuse to die before my time. Shout it wherever you are. Type it there. I refuse to die before my time in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Say it. Oh, Joe Maina. Wonderful Joe. God bless you. God bless you. Joe is watching us from Don Home, watching us uh, through YouTube. Wendy, watching us from Kili Money. God bless you. Wendy is getting blessed. Those watching us through YouTube, please talk to me. And make those confessions. Type them there and then make them. Come on. I refuse to die before my time. You know, the moment you understand that any, the faith that works, let me put it that way, is the faith that will involve the hand of God and the cooperation of man. I mean, divinity must partner with humanity to bring about the supernatural. The moment you begin thinking that way, the next question will be, what do I need to do to allow God's healing power to flow in my life? It will not be, I have done my best, let's go do the rest. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. God's involvement is determined by our partnership. Brothers and sisters, let me throw this to us. Nobody can break the laws of God. We can only break ourselves against them. We can only break ourselves against the laws of God, but we cannot break the laws of God. And the beauty about principles is that principles are not respected of persons. Principles are not respected of tribe, of gender, of age, or of title. Even me, as a man of God, if I don't do that which God wants me to do, if I don't partner with him the way I should partner according to scriptures, then spirits don't have respect for title. This is very, very important. We're getting blessed. Are we getting blessed wherever you are? Kushataya just joined us please love and share we are still doing divine healing and health and, 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 and by the way i'm just reminded that tomorrow we have a very important special holy communion service here in garden of faith we are on garden estate road uh off fika road super highway off fika road super highway exit seven you take exit seven when you're coming from the cbd exit seven is in that roundabout that goes to garden city that goes to mountain mall that left it will be just 300 meters you'll pass the famous roasters restaurant you'll pass a methodist church then you'll see miracle life assembly we on the road tomorrow six to eight we have a special healing holy communion service we are Breaking bread against every ancestral or hereditary diseases. That disease that is in the blood, in your family, with the mother's house, father's house. We are breaking bread against it so that it will not flow in our bodies from our bloodline. And at the same time, it's a healing service. Kai, Kai, such an important service. None of you should miss. If you are in Nairobi, get down to Miracle Life Assembly tomorrow. It will really bless your life. Prevention is better than cure. Don't wait for that disease to come for you to start praying. You may not even have the strength or the life in you to pray. But tomorrow is a special healing service. You're breaking bread against diseases, against sicknesses, and particularly hereditary or ancestral diseases. This is something. Oh, glory to God in the highest. I can't wait for tomorrow because I believe healing is your portion. Glory, glory to God. Are we getting blessed? Come on, are we getting blessed? God bless you, God bless you. So, we now are looking at keys to divine health. Steps. To partner with God so that the supernatural can come upon us 
for divine healing and total health. Now, there's something that you need to know even as we, we, we get deeper into this. Until you believe that God's will is for you to be healthy and to be healed. Until that enters deeply in your inner consciousness, you cannot believe God for divine health or healing. It must sink deeply in your inner consciousness that God's will for me is divine health. That God wants me healthy. God wants me strong. God wants me full of energy. God wants me well. It is his will. It is his will. That, 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 that is step number one. You see, awareness is the point of release of the supernatural. Let me repeat myself. Awareness. What you are aware of in your inner consciousness, not just mind, please, I'm really picking my words well. What you are aware of in your inner consciousness determines the spirit that you will attract. So for you to partner with God concerning anything, you must be aware you must be positively aware in your inner consciousness concerning the area of the thing that you desire god to do in your life so there must be an awareness a conscious awareness that sickness is not permitted in your body it's not god's will that must sink deeply in your heart even when the body is infirmed you must say within yourself i reject sickness it's not god's will this is not god's way i refuse to be sick i mean that has to enter in your inner consciousness. Otherwise, praying for healing, asking God to heal you, believing God for divine health, without this inner consciousness is a chase after the wind. Just like people who believe that the reason why they are suffering is because God is trying to teach them a lesson through their suffering. They are broke. House is locked. Children have attended, gone to from one or back to school, but they don't have money. And then they will tell you that God is trying to teach me something. That person, don't waste your time praying for divine provision. Because first of all, he does not have in himself the awareness, the consciousness that God's will is for them to have in abundance. You see, what you accept on the inside first determines what you attract on the outside. You must accept within yourself that God's will is for me to be strong, to be agile, and to be healthy. You must accept that on the inside. Oh, shaka baba. You must accept it on the inside. You must treat sickness as an enemy. Not only to be identified, but also to be vehemently resisted and fought. Yes. Oh, I refuse to be sick. My God. Say it again. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be sick. Come on, say it again. My body is not the temple of sickness and diseases. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Can you say it wherever you are? Affirm it in your consciousness. Believe it within yourself that God's will is for you to be healthy and to be healed. Awareness determines the release of spirits. <laughs> That's why today, even if I backslide, I cannot be a witch doctor. Because I will need that consciousness and awareness that is built over time in order to become a witch doctor. So that's why also you cannot be a witch doctor and get born again and tomorrow you're a pastor. It's not possible. Your spirit is born again, but your levels of awareness are very different. Instead of working on your problem, why don't you work on your awareness? Instead of paying attention to the pain, to the discomfort, why don't you pay attention to the word of God that talks about divine health so that you can increase your awareness and inner consciousness because what you are aware of, what you accept in your, on your inside is eventually what you'll attract to yourself. Whether it's a healing, a dog, 
a money, a person, whatever. Your inner consciousness or awareness determines the spirit you attract. Oh, God Almighty. Someone is getting blessed here. I have a witness in my heart that this year your visits to the hospital or to a physician will be cut short by the power of God. Divine health is entering your body now. I say divine health is entering your body now. Divine health is entering your body now. Somebody say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Say it again, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Say it, I live a healthy life in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Even if in your body now, Satan is trying to bring fever. Kai. Satan is trying to bring pimples. Oh, I don't know which allergy. Oh, I don't know your back is feeling like what. Oh, I don't know now you're frequently going to the washroom and you're getting concerned. What is this? Refuse to accept that sickness in your consciousness and in your awareness. Refuse on the inside. You know, what you accept internally happens externally. If you accept that pain as a normal thing, it will remain on you. I want to prophesy to somebody. You will not die because of sickness. When your time of death comes, it's not sickness that will take you. You will willingly give up your goals in the name of Jesus. Sickness shall not take you to heaven. You will not die of sickness. You shall live long and healthy. You shall live long and healthy. You shall live long and healthy. You shall live long and healthy in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I feel the power of God in this studio. Glory to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Shakata nanahazis. Abraski talia bragai. Emendere bragrasia kashu kupanelia. Rakatazo Sanilla Bragretis. Sickness is not God's will for your life. So steps to divine health and healing. So, number one, I've talked about the power of awareness. So you can't say that we have done our best, let God do the rest. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's wrong. Mm -mm. That's not Bible. Whoever taught you that deceived you. Whoever taught you that lied to you. Mm -mm. A, there must be a partnership. A conscious partnership. In John chapter 3. I love the question that Nicodemus asked. Nicodemus asked. What must I do. In order. To inherit. The kingdom of God. He knew that the kingdom of God has been freely given to us in Christ Jesus. But he knew that there is what I must do to connect to it. It's just like there is electricity here. But unless you connect the wires, you're not going to see the light. Jesus paid for our sickness. Jesus paid for our sins. Jesus paid for our poverty. But unless you connect the wires, the lights are not going to come on. It's simple. Oh, Rabataya Mayanda Lababa. Philippians chapter 2 says, It is him that worketh in us. It is both to do and to will for his good pleasure. Never forget this thing I taught you sometimes back. God works in us and God works through us, but God does not work for us. Mm. You miss a good place, say amen. God works in us. God works through us. But God doesn't work for us. Angels are the ones who minister to us. Or they work for us. But God will work in you and through you. So if you don't have the wisdom and the knowledge and the grace and the faith. To let what is working internally to come externally. You're going to be stuck.
I don't know that I'm talking to somebody tonight. God is good. So that is step number one. You must have the awareness, the consciousness that there is your part to play for the power of God to be displayed in your life. Number two, number two, this is very, very important. Are we getting blessed by the way? Number two, refuse and resist the presence of sickness in your body, in your soul, or in your spirit. Refuse. What you resist has no right to remain. <laughs> oh boy. What you resist has no right to remain. Refuse to accept the presence of sickness and diseases in your body. Refuse. You must understand that your body is not just any mass matter floating or walking on earth. The day you got born again, your body became the residence of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your spirit. And that's why in first Corinthians, second Corinthians, I think it's first or second chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six verse let me get it for you. Second Corinthians is it first or second? It is first Corinthians, sorry. First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six. Let's look at this. Verse 20 to be precise. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 20. It says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Huh? You cannot say you're glorifying God in your body when the body is sick. It says, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You must understand the day you gave your life to Jesus, you not only gave your heart, you not only gave your mind, but you also gave your body. And that's what the Bible says, you are bought with a price. You are not your own. It says, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit this is which are gods so if your body is the temple of the holy spirit then resist and refuse to allow any foreigner in the name of sickness in the name of disease to remain in your body don't allow any stranger to share the same house with our master and our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I refuse to be sick. Come on, say it again. I refuse to be sick. Okay. Yes. That's step number two. We're looking at keys to divine health, walking divine health. One is awareness and consciousness. Number two is you have to resist. Whatever you resist has no right to remain. Whatever you allow has a right to remain. Even if your body is infirm now, refuse that sickness. Refuse its authority and its abode in your body. Refuse. Refuse. Oh God, refuse. Even if you touch yourself and the fever is going, I don't say, my God, the fever. Say, I refuse this fever. It's not mine. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Brother, sister, if you keep refusing it, the fever will advise itself because you are the owner of your house. You know, your body is not you. Your body is where you stay. For instance, where you stay, your physical homes, if termites enter the house, you start crying, oh, termites, oh, they're entering, oh, termites, my God, my God, they're now entering, they're in the city room, oh, termites. Do you do that? No. When you see them, you immediately begin to think what to do. You take a broom, you spray insecticide, you, you, you take, you clean your house. I'll be in the same vein, when a headache, when a fever, when joints begin to misbehave, 
Don't just say, my God, my joints. Because that's how he behave. My joints, oh, my fever. My fe no, it's your house. If you don't clean your house, no one will clean it for you. You have to refuse sickness. You have to resist every kind of infirmity. What you resist has no right to remain. I don't know why I feel I'm talking to somebody. Is someone getting blessed? Come on. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be sick. Say it again. I refuse to be sick. My body is not the temple of sickness and disease. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I refuse this cancer from my body. I refuse this pain in my joints. I refuse this blood disease, this leukemia from my body. I refuse every discomfort in my stomach. I refuse every pain in my chest. I re you have to refuse it. What you refuse has no right to remain. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, resist the devil. Is it James or Peter? Let, 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 let's read these verses. It says, resist the devil, and he will flee away from you. It's in the book of what? Is it First Peter chapter 5? James chapter, chapter 4. Look at James chapter 4. Yes, James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. He says, resist. Look at it. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It says, resist and he will flee. Resist and he will flee. Resist and he will flee. Are we getting blessed? Resist and he will flee. Resist. And he will flee. Resist the devil. And he will flee away from you. Say, I refuse to be sick. Come on, say it again. I refuse to be sick. Those who are sending offering on that prayer point, I touch your seed. I don't send your offerings. I touch your seed. I pray that your offering will speak against any sickness in your body, any sickness in your lungs, any sickness in your blood, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, I refuse to be sick. All right, let's, let's look at some more. So that's, that's, that's number two. You have to. Okay? You have to. You have to resist. You have to resist the presence of sickness in your body. What you resist has no right to remain. You know, you must develop such a hatred against pain, against disease, because it is your passion that determines your reaction. Conviction is not something sourced from outside. Conviction is something generated from the inside. And that's why I want to give you reasons to hate sickness. Reasons not to allow sickness to be part of your body. No, not you. Not your house. Not you. Some would say, not me. Not my body. Not me. Not my house. Not me. Not my body. The, the, if you're comfortable with your sickness just because they have prescribed something for you and the thing is causing you to go about your normal days but now you can't live without this medication then you're far from receiving divine healing there must be a hatred there must be a passion for divine health and a passion against anything called sickness or disease or infirmity. That which causes your body to function in a way that it was not created to function is an enemy. So that's number two. There must be a reaction. There must be a resistance. You must not allow physical symptoms to become your mental reality. To become your spiritual reality. Yes, the enemy has thrown that arrow. 
the body is now weak the body is now sick refuse to allow that sickness to remain oh shakanda la ba 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 I love this teaching. Honestly, I feel blessed. Number three, very important. Speak to the disease. Speak to the sickness. Speak to the infirmity. Speak to the discomfort. Brothers and sisters, here is a mystery. Everything has ears. Everything has hear sound whether animals whether it's plantation whether it's your body everything that god create created can hear sound has ears you must address sickness as a personality not just a disease hmm. oh god i don't know that i'm talking to somebody here sorry you must address pain as a personality, not as a condition. Huh? Selah, think about that statement. The moment you begin to address sickness as a personality, not a condition, it lifts your consciousness, your consciousness into the realm of spirits. Don't treat that fever as a condition. Treat it as a personality. And if it's a personality, then you can address it. Hey. Fever out of my body. You pain in my chest. Out! You are not permitted. What are you doing? You, you are addressing it as a personality. Sickness is not a condition. It's a spirit. And behind every spirit is the personality of that spirit. That means it can be addressed. And don't just address it once. And then you say, I said the fever should go and the fever is not going. Guy, the thing is, the thing, the thing, the th no. Speak consistently until your voice is heard. You know, the Bible says, cast not away thy confidence. For it has a great recompense of reward. You have to, that is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. You have to speak to that disease in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Kill the life of that disease with your words. Proverbs chapter 18. I think it's verse 21, sir. It says, life and death. Is it Proverbs 18, 20, 21? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. It says, life and death. It says, is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. It says, and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Stop treating sickness as a condition. Treat it as a spirit. Treat it as a personality. Speak to it, not once, not twice, but speak to it until it leaves your body or the body of your loved one. I feel the presence of God here. Yes. Uh, are we getting blessed? Tell that pain to leave your son. Speak to the rashes that are on the body of your brother and say, Rashes, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of this body. You are not permitted. You are not a guest in this house. Speak with authority. That's number three. Keys to divine health. You see... God's word, the Bible, on the lips of a Christian is God talking. Hmm. God's word on the lips of a believer 
is God talking. Hey, my God, are people there or they're asleep? Let me repeat myself. God's word on the lips of believers is God talking. Until you give voice to the word, it remains important. It has potential to walk. But you put that potential in God's word to walk by voicing it. By voicing it. By God's word will not help you when in the Bible. God's word comes alive on the lips of believers. Oh God Almighty. God's word comes alive on the lips of believers. God's word comes alive on the lips of believers. God's word can't help you while it remains in the Bible. That's why you can have accident with the Bible in the car. You can have evil dreams with the Bible in your bedroom. You can even sleep with the Bible under your pillar. But the evil dreams will still come. But God's word gains momentum and power when it is voiced by the lips of a believer. God's word does not work until it is voiced, until it is spoken. So that it is written by the stripes we are healed doesn't make you healed. That it is written that wealth and riches shall be in your house, it doesn't make you wealthy. That it is written a thousand will fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not come near you, it doesn't make it walk. But when what is written becomes what is spoken, God manifests his power. Let me repeat myself. When what is written becomes what is spoken, God manifests his power. You see, what is written must become what is spoken. Let me show you something that will really bless you. Oh, this, this delivered me. Let's go to, to Luke chapter 4, I believe. Are we getting blessed, by the way? So until you speak to sickness and you continually speak to it and you continually resist it, it has a right to remain. And how do you resist? Words. Words. Hmm. Let me show you something. Go to Luke chapter 4. This will bless your hearts. Luke chapter 4. It is, it is interesting when you look at the account of Luke chapter 4. Jesus was on the mount of temptation. Please follow this closely. Chapter 4, verse 4. Luke 4, 4. Let, let, let all of us get to Luke chapter 4, verse 4, because there's something very profound and very powerful I want you to catch from this account. It will help you to understand that a closed mouth is a closed destiny. A closed mouth is a closed future. Until you open your mouth, God's power cannot be on display. What is written cannot help you. It is when what is written becomes what is said. In other words, when you, when you voice the word, comes evident. Are you ready for this? Please. Get, get, let everyone get to Luke chapter 4. My God, my God. Now, chapter 4, verse 4, follow me, call, follow, follow me closely. And Jesus answered him, that is the devil, saying, it is written, look at it, it is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Satan did not respect that. The next verse, verse 5, and the devil 
taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Verse 6, Luke 4, 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. And if thou therefore wilt worship me, all, all shall be thine. Look at verse number 8. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. Again, he said it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Satan did not stop there. He did not respect what is written. Verse 9. And brought him to Jerusalem. What? I mean, are you telling me Satan did not respect what was written? He did not. Jesus kept saying, it is written. It is written. Satan continued to say, what is it? I don't respect what is written. Verse 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem. And set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down hence. Verse 10. Satan now is quoting. Look at this nonsense. Verse 10. Verse 10. Look for 10. For it is written. Satan is quoting also. It is written. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. But verse 12 is very different. Look. Chapter 4. Verse 12. This time. Jesus never said it is written. Verse 12. And Jesus answering and said unto him, It is said. It is said. In other words, what is written is what I am saying. It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 13. And the devil had ended all the temptation. He departed from him for a season. When Jesus said it is said, Satan left. What is written has to become what is said for the supernatural to be on display. This is a truth that will help your life. You have to speak. I am not sick. I refuse fever in my body. In the name of Jesus. But the stripes of Jesus I have appetite. My appetite is intact. But the stripes of Jesus. Every sore in my mouth. In my lips. Is gone in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. My menses are normal. I have no pain. I have no cramps. You have to say it. And don't just say it once. But you have to say it. And say it. And say it until that devil has no right to remain in your body. What is written has to become what is said for the supernatural to flow. I don't know whether you guys are still there or you've gone home. Are we together? To hmm? Are you there? Shalabra Klatara Yes. So that's why many people read many things, but their lives don't change. When what is written becomes what you're saying, Satan will leave you. Never be afraid to speak the word of God in the face of contradictory evidence. No matter how contradictory a situation is, what is written has to be what is said for the power, for the power, for the power, for the power of God to manifest. I have eight keys to divine health. I'm just on key number three. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. You know, you can tell when the word is from the Lord, your spirit bears you witness. How many feel that something profound has been revealed to their spirits and to their minds? How many are getting blessed? How many are seeing that sickness is no longer part of their body? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Naomi says, I have to say what is written. 
Yes, Dad, it is said. Tina getting blessed. Irene, a close mouth is a close destiny. When you voice the word of God, its power becomes evident. You got it. You got it, girl. Mm. Wendy on YouTube says, What is written must become what is spoken. You got it. You got it. Getting blessed. Ambassador Catherine, what is written must become what is said for the supernatural to happen. Never be afraid to speak the word. You see, that, that's, 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 this, is, this is the missing link, I'll be honest. And then it's not just saying it once. The Bible says, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding. You have to say it over and over and over because you're communicating to a spirit. Remember I told you, don't address sickness as a condition. Address it as a personality, as a spirit. Mm. Mm. How many feel the anointing? Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, by the way, we have another show in the morning. Where I'll be doing prayers for divine health and healing. And then I'll be going through some healing reports. And then, but that will be online. And then in the night, in the evening, 6 to 8 p.m., we are here in church live for a communion that will change your life forever. We are breaking bread against sickness and disease in your body and in your family. Be here tomorrow. Six, and we keep time. We are on Garden Estate Road, exactly 300 meters from Thika Road Superhighway Exit 7. Exit 7 is that roundabout that goes to Garden City, that goes to Mountain Mall. If you're coming from the city center, you take your left, it's exit 7. Then you get to Miracle Life Assembly tomorrow. And get ready for healing. You're not coming to be prayed for, you're coming to be healed. I'm not going to pray for the sick tomorrow, I'm going to heal the sick tomorrow. Somebody say, I'm coming to be healed, not to be prayed for. Mm. I'm coming to be healed, not to be prayed for. That's the attitude I want you to have. 0769 Two nine nine six one six is the number to call or to text in case you need further further uh, clarity on the direction of the service tomorrow. But even now, I don't want us to let the anointing go. I feel the power of God. But as I say, it's feeling the anointing, getting yeah, 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 yeah. There, there, there's something here. Stretch forth your hands, whatever you are. I command every discomfort. Every pain, every sickness, every disease in your body, in your blood, in your mind. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Be healed. Be made whole. Be healed. Be healed in your body. Be healed on your back. I command your lungs to be made whole in the name of Jesus. Your bladder, your liver, every organ of your body that is not functioning according to God's will and purpose, I release the healing power of God. Yes, 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 yes. Be healed. Be restored. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That sickness has no right to remain in your body. I remove it in Jesus' name. For it is written by the stripes you are healed. Somebody say, no more sickness in my body. Come on, shout it wherever you are. No more sickness in my body. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. This is powerful. Oh, glory. Tomorrow, I'm not praying for the sick. Tomorrow, I'm healing the sick. We're looking at keys to working in divine health. We just started today. This is key number three. Tomorrow morning, I'll have special prayers. And I'll also go through some testimonies of healing. And then in the night, you'll be here online, on li live on ground. Don't make a mistake of missing it. To change your life. It will change your life. Then on Thursday and Friday, 
We are still here from 6 to 8 as we start another new topic. Or maybe we continue with divine health. I mean between judgment and divine health. Because I still feel there's a lot I've not taught us about divine health. We'll see what God has for us. But tomorrow, it's divine health. I want everyone watching to pick a seed of connection. Connect with the work of God. Worship the Lord. With a sacrifice. Give an offering, a sacrifice against sickness. Against sickness. I think, Ambassador, you're right. I should continue the divine health. I think, I think let me seek the Lord tonight and see. But everyone get, a, get an offering. One of the things that helps in fighting spiritual things is seed. The Bible says the riches, the ransom of a man's life is his riches. Proverbs chapter 13. The ransom of a man's life is his riches. Seed speaks. Seed is covenant. Seed is worship. I want everyone to get a sacrifice. I want you to give against sickness. Are you getting it? You're not just giving. Eh? You're giving against sickness. Whether sickness in your family whether in your own body, whether in your, your children, just, just, just get a sacrifice now. I want to pray. And let it be a point of release. You're, you're, you're sowing against pain. You're sowing against infirmity. You're releasing a covenant in your seed against sickness. Let's do that now. Let everyone gather it now. And as you're doing that, let me pray for Titus and fast fruit. As you're offering your fast fruit. Offering your fast fruit or you're paying your tithe. I want to pray with you fast while everyone else in this broadcast, whether you're watching on TV, on YouTube, or on Facebook, gather your sacrifice, your seed against sickness. Gather it now. Gather it now. I want to pray. Let me start with tithes. You're paying your tithe. You're redeeming a vow you made. Or you're offering your or you're offering your your fast fruit. Let me start with you, but let everyone else gather a seed, a sacrifice. That that will say, I release this against the blood pressure in my body. I release this against pain. I release this against sickness. Gather it. Don't lose this opportunity. Father, thank you for the tithes. Thank you for fast fruits. Jehovah bless. Jehovah increase. Jehovah show them grace and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Now, I want to pray for your sacrifices, your seed, your voice against sickness and disease. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I touch your sacrifice. I touch your worship. I touch your seed. I speak against sickness. I speak against diseases. I speak against infirmity. I speak against weakness. I command this sacrifice shall speak for you, for your house. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Start releasing it now. Ambassador Catherine, more grace in your divine health. Your sacrifice is received. Angela, you send wave from the U.S. I don't know whether today now you're in Minneapolis or you're back to Texas. But it is received. More grace on your divine health. Justina Kinyansui. In the name of Jesus, health is your portion. Health is your portion. Pauline, say my tithe and my seed. Jehovah show you grace. Jehovah show you mercy. Grace upon your health. Grace upon your finances. Sifa, uh, no, this is Pastor Fred. You know, one thing I love about my pastors, they are not familiar. No, they are not. Pastor, Pastor Fred, God bless you. In the name of Jesus, Pastor, more grace on your divine health. More grace on your health. 
divine health is your portion. Naomi from Seattle, your sacrifice, your seed against sickness. I pray may it speak for you and your children and your house, Naomi. In Jesus' mighty name, more grace, more grace, more grace. In the name of Jesus, Pastor Rufus, he said, your tithe and your seed, the Lord my God, to fight for you, to show you mercy and grace. More grace, specifically, on your health. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm not able to read all. I just, you know, say a few. But I can see that equity, some people are using family bank and all that. It is well received. Every sacrifice sent now. Every offering, every worship, the Lord touches it. The Lord shows you mercy. 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 Shows you mercy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, Peter and Dunda. God bless you, Isaac. God bless you, Jackson. More grace on your health. Keep sending. Keep worshiping God. But now I want to close. So that I can go tomorrow in the morning, we'll have a special program, prayers, very early in the morning. We we'll love prayers. Again, it's sickness and disease. And then a few things I'm going to share. Then now we will come back in the evening. Tomorrow, the morning will be online, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. I'll be live on Facebook. Prayers. Again, it's sickness and disease. Please make sure you tune in tomorrow morning. Six, it will only be 30, 40 minutes of prayers and word of encouragement. It's a very important service tomorrow. And then in the night at 6 p.m., we are coming back now for on-ground, on-ground service. The Lord will show us grace. Allow me to go, but as I go, the hand of the Lord remains upon you. His favor remains upon you. His grace covers you. The Lord shows you mercy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's meet in the morning at 6 a.m. as we pray against sickness and disease. And I release God's word to start your day. God bless you. Bye-bye.